our general math class. We introduced Anmiti in the previous video lesson. And as we have mentioned, we will focus this next video lesson is still on Anmiti. While we concentrated on simple Anmiti in the past lesson, this time, you will learn about general Anmiti. General Anmiti is an Anmiti where the length of payment interval is different from the length of the interest compounding period. And a general annuity in which the periodic payment is made at the end of the payment interval is called general ordinary annuity. For instance, monthly installment payment of a property with an interest rate compounded semi-annually. To solve for the future value f of a general ordinary annuity, we use the formula f equals r times the quantity 1 plus j raised to the n minus 1 over j, where r is the regular payment, j is the equivalent interest rate uh, per payment interval converted from the interest rate per period, and n is the number of payments. To solve for the present value p of a general ordinary annuity, we use the formula p equals r times 1 minus the binomial 1 plus j raised to the negative n over j, where r is the regular payment, j is the equivalent interest rate per payment interval converted from the interest rate per period, and n is the number of payments. So let us use these formulas in the following example. Example 1. Matmat saves 3,000 pesos every 3 months in a bank that pays 0.5% compounded monthly. How much will be his savings after 4 years? Notice that in this problem, the, the interval of savings is every 3 months or quarterly or that is equal to 4. And then, the interest period is monthly, which is 12. Since the interval of the savings and the interest period are not equal or they are different from each other, then this problem involves general annuity and not simple annuity. Now, let us enumerate the given in example 1. First, the value of R, which is 3,000 or what Matmat saves every three months, his regular savings. And then, the value of N, or the number of payments, which comes from um, the interest period, or, or meaning the payment interval, which is quarterly, so that is 4, times the value of T, which should be expressed in years. And since the given is already in years, then we will just copy that. So we have 4 times 4, 16, the value of n. And then the value of j should be equal to the interest per payment interval or saving interval. Since that is quarterly, so the denominator is 4. This will be converted from the interest per uh, period or divided by 12, either the 12 over 2. And then, we will solve for the value of n because we are asked to solve for uh, the amount, the total savings of math after 4 years. So, that is f, future value. Now, first, uh, we will solve for the value of j. So, we have f sub 1 or future value sub 1 is equal to the future value sub 2. So, the formula for the first f or f sub 1 is p times 1 plus interest per or over 4 that's the saving interval is equal to the second f f sub 2 is p times 1 plus the interest per month that comes from the interest period here month so I did a 12 over 4 raised to the 12 T the first is raised to the 4 T next 
by dividing both sides by P. P divided by P is 1. P divided by P is 1. So, we use their MPE. So, P are cancelled out. And then, by multiplying or raising, raising both sides of the equation by 1 over T, imagine we raise this by 1 over T, the whole equation, then that will be 4T times 1 over T. T will be cancelled. T will be left by 4 with 4 times 1 and 4. Then, in the right-hand side of the equation, when you raise this whole uh, expression by 1 over t, uh, you multiply the exponents. 12t times 1 over t, t will be cancelled, then 12 times 1 is 12. So, the equation is now reduced to this form. We don't have p variable anymore and t variable. Uh, we only... Uh, we are left with one variable only, which is i. So, we may solve for the value, but we are not interested in the value of i. We are interested with the value of this fraction, which, is, which will be the value of j. And then, by simplifying the expression inside the grouping symbol in the right side of the equation, this is what we'll get. I rounded the answer to the nearest five decimal places so that the answer will not be affected that much because if I only use two decimal places, um, uh, the, the answer will be uh, more affected than when I use more decimal places. So rounded to the five decimal places, this is what you will get and then uh, notice that we have exponents in both in both sides of the equation. In the left we have 4, in the right we have 12. Before we raise it to 12, of course, we may do that, but uh, we may also opt to raise both sides of the equation by 1 fourth. When this is raised to 1 fourth, you'll have two exponents, so they will be multiplied. 4 times 1 fourth, of course, is 1. So the exponent of this uh, expression will now be 1. When raised to 1, of course, it will remain as is. And then, since we raise the left side by 1 fourth, then we'll also raise the right side by the exponent 1 fourth. So that will be 12 times 1 fourth, or 12 over 4 is 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And when we raise this to the third power, this is what we will get. And then again, the left side uh, has exponent 1 by now because we multiplied it by 1. So this is what we will get. Next, the goal is to solve for this part, this, push, this fraction. So we will use APE to add negative 1 to both sides to eliminate this positive 1 on the left side. So, add negative 1 to both sides. It will be i to the 4th over 4 equals, when you add negative 1 here, you'll get 0 0.00125. That value, or this fraction, is the value of j. Since we know now the value of j, we also have n and r, then we may solve for the value of f. By substitution, again, R is 3,000 times 1 plus the value of J, uh, 0 0.00125, that's the, to the nearest 5 decimal places, and then the value of N, which is 16 minus 1 over J again. By using PEMDAS again, we'll simplify this part first and raise, raise it to 16 power. Use your calculator and you will get this decimal number, 1.02019. That's to the, to the nearest 5 decimal places. Then, minus 1, subtract 1 from it. This is what you will get. And then, when you divide it by this number, uh, you'll get 3,000 times 16.15088. Multiplying the, uh, those two, we will get 48,000 452 pesos and 63 centavos, the value of L, or the total savings of MathMath in 4 years. Example 2. 
Crew plans to buy an e-bike payable for one year starting at the end of the month. How much is the cost of the e-bike if his monthly payment is 1,500 pesos and interest is 5% compounded semi-annually? Again, in example 2, like in example 1, you will notice that the payment interval, which is monthly, so that is 12, and the interest period, semi-annually, so that's 2 in a year, 12 and 2 are not the same. Therefore, this problem or example 2 involves also general annuity and simple, not simple annuity. By enumerating the given, R is equal to 1,500. That is his monthly payment, regular payment. And then the value of J is I to the 12 or the interest per uh, per payment interval. Since the payment interval is monthly, so that is 12. Which will be converted from the interest per period, interest period, which is 2. So this will be converted from I squared over 2. And then the value of N is the number of payments, which comes from the payment interval, 12 times the value of T, which is 1 year because he plans to pay it for one for one year. So that's 12 times 1 is equal to 12. And then we are asked to solve for the value of P because uh, we would like to know the cost of the e -bike. So that is P and not F. So first, let us solve for the value of J or I to the 12 over 12. So we'll start again with this equation. The future value sub 1 is equal to future value sub 2. And for the first, for F sub 1, we have P times present value times 1 plus I to the 12 over 12 to the 12 T. So this is the formula for the future value in a simple annuity. And then that is equal also to a simple annuity, a future value in simple annuity, wherein uh, this is expressed in interest rate. We'll use here the interest rate per uh, interest period, which is semi-annually or 2. So all values of M will be 2. While on the left side, the values of M is 12. Because this is based on uh, the payment interval, which is monthly. Uh, the goal here is to solve for the value of I to the 12 over 12. Because that is our J. Now, again, by... Uh, multiplying both sides by 1 over P, P will be cancelled in both sides. And then by multiplying or raising both sides to 1 over P, 12P times 1 over P, 12 times 1 is 12. Also in the right side, 2T times 1 over T, so 2 times 1 is 2. So we don't have variable P and variable T anymore. We are left with one variable only, so we may solve for the value of this fraction. So next, by simplifying this expression inside the parentheses, 0 0.05 divided by 2, and then adding the answer to that or its quotient to 1, you will get 1.025. Next, you may raise it to 2 before you simplify this part or remove it remove this uh, this exponent but we may also raise both sides to uh, to 1 over 12 so when you raise the left hand side of the equation to 1 over 12 we, you will multiply the, those exponents 12 times 1 over 12 and 12 times 1 over 12 is 1 because 12 will be cancelled out so this uh, these two terms will be raised to the first power and that is the same as 1 plus i to the 12 over 12 equals, of course, we'll raise this also to 1 over 12, 2 times 1 over 12. Um, by simplifying, we'll get 1 over 6. Using your calculator, this now will become 1.00412. I, I again 
around the answer to the nearest five decimal places. And we will just use APE by adding negative 1 to both sides. And this is what we will get. The value of I to the 12 over 12 or the value of J. So again, going back to general annuity, this is the formula to use to solve for P or present value or which is the cost of the E value. P equals R times 1 minus 1 plus J to the negative N all over J. Then by substitution, you'll substitute the value for R, J, and N. P is equal to 1,500, the value of R, times 1 minus 1, these are constants, uh, 1 minus quantity 1 plus the value of J, and then raised to the negative 12 over the value of J again. By looking at this and using PEMDAS rule, we know that this is what we will simplify first. So add these two first and then raise it first to negative 12. And then from 1, you'll subtract the answer to this whole. And then after finding the answer here or the difference, we'll divide it by this uh, decimal number and multiply it finally by 1,500. So let us do that. First, we add these two and raise them to negative 12. This is what we'll get. Of course, you still have one minus and you still have this denominator. Next, subtract these two. Still, you have that denominator and the other factor. Then, Divide this two. This is what we'll get. Finally, multiply it by 1,500. You will get the cost of the IBAN, which is 17,527 pesos and 9 centavos.